thank you for being here. Um, who are we? Who am I? Um, Felix Seid is a brand from Dassault Systems. Dassault Systems is an engineering company creating software for product engineering, product simulation, and so forth. You know, CATIA, SolidWorks, Solid Edge, Inovia, and all these. Felix Seid is quite a new brand that concentrates on marketing in the age of experience. Where's that connection? I'll come back later to that. Um, we are more or less in the field, in the market since 1999, because we were formerly RTT, real-time technology, and focusing on real-time visualization. Um, what we do is actually what we call marketing in the age of experience. All world changes around us. Uh, it's not about understanding what the product does, it's really experiencing the product, also in the marketing field, yeah, before I buy the product. Uh, the example that I use uh, through that speech is, is, is a experience, a solution that we created for the brand DS Automobile from PSA. Um, it's their luxury brand. Uh, and they kind of went a new way in terms of how they present their cars and make them uh, accessible in, in dealerships. They created those smaller booths inside shopping malls. So it only had a few square meters. They had one car on the floor. Uh, they had, I think, five or six different models actually in their lineup, and they needed a solution on, through which they can actually really emotionally also um, present their cars that are not on the floor to their customers, that are walk-in customers. Yeah. And this is where we help them. So um, while that movie is playing, hopefully, yeah, which explains a little bit of that idea, um, so what, what we created is a, is a solution that, that uses VR in this case, HTC Vive uh, hardware, um, to actually experience the car. The experience starts with sitting on the actual seat, um, experiencing in the headset the interior of the car. You can configure uh, multiple things inside the car that you are sitting in. You can change and click, click and change and so forth. So, and before the experience, actually you choose which, which model you want to look at. Yeah. Um, from seating, you could open door, get out of the car, um, have a look around the car. And experience also there. Uh, your different choices of the car, first of all, also the design in a Paris environment, um, but also um, just experiencing what's, what options of choice you have for that particular model. Um, we didn't just start putting that into dealerships. Yeah. DS was, was, was interested in the experience when we started two years ago, I think, to put it first in, in an event-like uh, character on the Geneva Motor Show. Uh, we had followed up um, Frankfurt Motor Show, ERR, and again, Geneva and Paris. Um, so more or less um, space-based events where this thing went through a couple thousand users um, a day. And then they made the choice to not just use it for launch of a new vehicle, but really also to use it as a, as a sales device, as a sales tool. Now, with that additional, let's say, challenge on having to roll that out into multiple dealerships, into maybe changing architecture of the room, changing elements, it's not you, the expert, that is always um, on location to install it and to put it up. You have to work with uh, hardware in, in hardware vendors, hardware suppliers, and uh, also um, people that manage that hardware remotely. Um, that brings up a few other challenges, and also actually the, the range of, of, of products inside a VR is quite challenging. Um, so far, we rolled it out to 150. Um, by the end of the year, it should be 180 um, dealerships, and the goal is to roll it out into 300 locations next year. It's really interesting and gives us a lot of data. Some of the elements that are, that are crucial for that is um, that we created a very modular framework that handles not just let's say, the exit file, because it's not just an exit file. Yeah. You have different content, you have different models, you have to load uh, and start the system, you have to be able to maintain it and administer it remotely, uh, you have to display probably not just the VR experience in the headset, but you have to ex um, 
display something on the screen in the same room and you have to bring up screensavers while there's nobody in the in this showroom and so forth. So we put, build up um, a modular framework that allows us to create also in such a life cycle of an experience that should run for a couple of years that allows us to build new functionality through plugins without actually um, disturbing the core. Um, what does that mean? We have something like an asset player in there that through which we can uh, load onto the same screen uh, movies, images, documents that are supposed to um, support the marketing language of the product. We have uh, the system state and model state that connects to, to a remote server that gives us really also um, reports and dashboards on how many systems are up, how, what's their latest version that was updated to those systems, or to be able to, to tell our client uh, there's, there's 10 systems that need updating, uh, probably send your service guy around it because it seems that the internet connection is broken or something, yeah, uh, stuff like that. Um, we have a configuration manager that either manages the configuration of the product or validates it against a rule-based engine on the, uh, on the, for example, the customer ordering systems. And we have an abstract render phase that allows us to use different renderers uh, on, the, on, the, on the display, actually. Yeah, so we use different renderers uh, depending on is it immersive, we need high frame rate, uh, we have to compromise on the quality towards, hey, we actually have to display something on a, on a multi-panel power wall in 4K or 8K resolution and stuff like that. Yeah. In this case, um, we, used, we didn't have an 8K resolution thing, so we used um, only the HTC Vive and a single display. Um, also, from, from building up the, 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 the virtual experience, you have to, to, to look at it from all, aside from all the fancy stuff and the storytelling and that you want to do is actually, are you able to put all the cars into the same physical and virtual environment? Yeah. Which means um, you have to build up blueprints on where you understand on what the, what the location will look like and how can we fit all the different cars with different dimensions so we don't have to move the uh, the chair around, the real physical seat inside the, inside, the, inside the building. And do they fit? And as you know, uh, through HTC Vive, sensors and so forth, you're quite limited in space also in the virtual world on how you can, where you can walk around the car. Um, so actually the solution uses, um, in, in VR uses, uses a method where if you walk to a certain checkpoint and would look like, would look at the car from the back, which you physically can because you can't just walk around. Uh, you have a hotspot, you click, and the car will move for you and turn around and go back. Yeah? In that sense, we had to pay attention that then the car is more or less in the same place where it is before, just backwards. So nobody will run accidentally into that physical car seat. Yeah? And on top of that, we had to check that and analyze that and simulate that also for um, the UK market and the island market where everything is switched, yeah. so yeah, have to think everything mirroring. The architecture doesn't switch. So you're, all of a sudden you enter the room from a different side, the display is somewhere else, but all the other elements like that are, that are relevant for, for your experience in VR are very, very important. Um, and as you can see, we have the different shapes of the different cars painted in the same room and checkpoint, and we did the other side. We simulated, clearly also simulated in VR with a couple of prototypes with just the rough dimensions. Does it work, does it not work? Where do we have problems? With the interaction of the car, getting outside, walking around, not bumping into that physical chair, not bumping into the walls, that's easy, but the, the chair itself, the seat in the room, that was the, was the main thing. Um, if, you, if you looked at it, where does the content come from? And this is, I think, where, 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 where the sweet spot of 3 d Excite is. Particular is um, we really use a very, through our experience, a very methodology-based um, approach to how we are able to process all that data. And if you look at the lineup, product lineup of, of um, PSA, um, still without Opel and Vauxhall, but it's, an, it's quite an impressive lineup. And if you think Audi, Volkswagen, Porsche, they all have um, roughly amount, same amount of products, yeah, around 50. 50 products, you can say. They all get updates twice a year. 
Uh, every, every product that you see there has a lifespan of six years. We'll get a major update three in, after three years, and we'll get two updates per year, minor updates, just a, different colors, a couple of rims, maybe the new navigation system, maybe a different exhaust, and all these things. Yeah? So you really have to be able to sustainably create the content for this type of, I would call it, enterprise experience, because the dealership cannot show the last year's car because then you would get a lot of questions from customers experiencing it. So we have really have to make sure that we always have the updated um, product in those experiences. And what does that mean for an artist really or for, for somebody who works on it? You, we typically start off with the, with the CAD data. Yeah? CAD data, what does, what's included in CAD data? CAD data is simply just the geometry of, of the physical product. And for that, not even all the geometry, it's only the hard surfaces. So what you need to do then is to, to, to build up um, like all the soft parts, like leather upholstery, the gear shift bag, stitching, and all these things, um, and, and, and build that on top. And you have to include it into a structure that allows you to really uh, keep track of all the different parts. And also um, creates, gives you all the visual relevant uh, information into that same structure, what we call the visual bill of material, the VISBOM. On top of that, clearly materials, but there's a different world, which is the marketing or ordering world. You have engineering on the one side, manufacturing, and then you have marketing. They all speak different languages, even in digital, so you have to bring them together. Um, marketing, marketing code for a rim is something different than the part number that is actually in the PLM system. You have to add that element to the content. Why? So that in the experience, which is on the other side, you are able really to filter on the one correct configuration that you show in that instance to the customer. Yeah. And you need to be very flexible in that in terms of configuration can change. The rules can change from day to day. Um, they are different from one location in, let's say, Paris to another location in the UK yeah, because one is right-hand drive, the other one is left-hand drive, for example. They can change in time. The one car or the one product that is valid in, let's say, Germany is not valid in the moment in the US because it will be only launched six months later. You have to take in all that into account and create a system that uh, really looks into that. Therefore, we, we structured the approach of creating, creating all, that, uh, all that product data by uh, putting it into phases. And we start with the sourcing, get all the information from all the different uh, systems and all the different, let's say, um, teams of a client uh, and bring it together in the enriching phase and that's where we have all the information of the product in the enriching phase and we keep as much as information as possible up to that phase and then we start staging it. I'll show it to you in a more detailed way on the next slide. Um, so first you have sourcing again here. We source, well the four main ingredients are geometry, structure, marketing codes and material. Uh, you enrich it by, by modeling, by applying the materials, by scanning physical materials and texture them, and you create a product correctness, product correct master model. That's what we call it. Um, through our technology, we are able to keep, to preserve all the polygon data and all the NURBS data. So we are up to that point, we are able to up tessellate, down tessellate, whatever the experience is at the end. Yeah? So we do that not just for VR, AR, or real-time visualization. We do that also for creating um, CGI models for high-resolution print images, for example. So the one data set allows us to do later on all the different experiences. We call that then the universal data model. This is where we go to the client. He approves on, on the correctness. And then the creative part starts. We put lighting in. We put it into an environment and so forth. and then we go into actually then in the deployment phases where we optimize. That's where we optimize towards the later experience. Is it a print um, production or is it a VR production? And clearly, as we, as we know in VR, AR, it's, it's all about performance or size. It's about the draw calls, the number of objects, texture sizes, how much um, GPU memory do I use, uh, triangles, and all these things. And this is actually what I said before, this is something that we look at at the very, very, very end of the process in order to really uh, be able to, to update all the cars and use them, use them in multiple production lines. 
Um, what we do there is, is, is today clearly, I think you know, all know the solutions out there to optimize and improve um, big data as such. Uh, we are actually, or do have products, hub, robot and hub that, that would help you there as well. Um, just to let you know. Um, and they also come with multiple, on the one side with multiple importers and on the other side with multiple exporters to go into whatever package you want to go. Yeah. Um, that said, probably as a last thing, I can present you the showreel and then I'm open for questions. Okay. The showreel shows uh, just the amount of work that we're doing. Uh, it's not just VR AR, there's some VR AR stuff in there. It's all about uh, print, movie. So all the products that you see, they're all the cars. Here you can see we are 80% automotive, but all the cars in there are virtual. Um, rendered. Um, and put into many different experiences. Thank you very much. Any questions?